I'm Neil, and seven years ago, I quit my job in aviation and went to work building a house for my growing family. Little did I know that experience would lead to a second career involving construction, urban forestry, landscaping, and running my own business. My whole life, I've been drawn to doing things myself and hope that these videos inspire you to make being handy your new habit. Please subscribe and welcome to the show. Just out for a little walk. Uh, it's a beautiful Saturday. And um, I thought I'd uh, take the opportunity to share with you guys. So last night I was in the shop and I was getting ready to um, take the bobcat apart. Because um, as you know, on the last video that I put out, I broke it. There's a hydraulic line that needs to be replaced. And as I was taking it apart, I was thinking, what is it that compels me to continue to do things myself, to be quote unquote handy? Um, what is it that, that motivates me to do that? And um, while I was taking things apart, I was thinking about that. And so I thought I'd use the opportunity here today to uh, share my top five reasons for being handy. So reason number one for me for learning new things and for um, developing new skills is that learning is fun. Um, inherently with learning, there's a risk and there's a reward for taking risk. And um, as a function of that, there's an element of um, there's an element of confidence that comes from learning a new skill. Um, take, for example, the idea of traveling. It's hard to it's hard to think about in today's day and age with restrictions and and uh, COVID and all that stuff, but. Imagine going to a new country where they don't speak English and um, learning the language as you travel through that country. You could hire a translator to follow you around and to be on your hip the whole time to translate for convenience the whole time, but that's not what most people choose to do because when they leave that country, and they've picked up tidbits of the language and they've managed to communicate with people that don't speak their language, there's an immense degree of satisfaction that comes with that. So the first one for me has to be that uh, the learning is just fun. It's fun to set your mind to something and to uh, try something new. And when you succeed at it, it's a very rewarding feeling. Reason number two for um, being handy and self-sufficient is that um, specialization isn't always necessary. This is obviously my opinion, but if you think about the world that we live in, it seems to me that everything these days is specialized. Think about, think about where we get our food, specialized big farms, big specialized equipment, etc. Think about the amount of people that are required uh, to build a typical house. Um, there's guys that install drywall where I live, and there's guys that sand the drywall mud that has been put on by yet a third specialization of a guy that tapes the drywall that has been hung by somebody else. I don't think that that amount of specialization is necessarily required. When you think about 
our ancestors and the pioneers coming west and people coming over from you know England and and France on sailing ships there wasn't a lot of specialization in those in those times I mean sure there was there was carpenters and there was blacksmiths and and things like that but I would say for the most part people had a very broad set of skills in order to be settlers and pioneers and um, I think that that's part of the spirit that I get when I have a broad set of skills is the the it gives me a feeling of satisfaction to know that um, that I can do a lot of different things well. I'm not going to say that I can do things as well as the people that do them for a living. For example, welding. I, I dabble in welding. I can stick metal together with a welder. It doesn't make me a very good welder, but I can get by. And for the most part, I have gotten by. I have been I've been lucky enough to have opportunities to weld, and now I consider myself a decent welder. Um, I'm not ticketed. I'm not specialized to the extent they are. I can't make a living as a welder. But I can fix my own stuff, and I'm confident in my welding enough to be able to fix my own things. So it's kind of that 80-20 rule. I can get 80% of the stuff that I need done, done, with 20% of the knowledge that a professional welder would have, if that makes sense. So the second reason for being handy is we don't have to be as specialized as the world is. Number three is pretty simple and straightforward. Um, Developing new skills and learning how to do new things keeps you from getting bored. Um, it's a boredom killer for sure. There's not a lot of time where I'm sitting around thinking to myself, you know, oh, what do I want to do today? I always generally have something on the go, some project, some um, skill that I'm working on, something I'm learning um, or trying to teach myself, even if it's not even if it's not something that I'm doing right at this exact second, it's something that may help me in the future. Um, an example right now is I'm trying to teach myself how to sail. Um, do I have a sailboat right now? No. Um, do I want a sailboat in the future? Yeah. And so, you know, trying to get a head start on some of those skills um, keeps me from becoming bored. So that's number three, it's a boredom killer. Reason number four to learn new skills and to be handy is economy. Um, doing things yourself saves you money. And um, that doesn't necessarily mean that um, I'm cheap or uh, even consider myself frugal, but it does, I do save money by doing things myself. Take for example, this latest project that I'm uh, undertaking with the Bobcat. Um, if I took that Bobcat in to get it fixed, it would likely cost me uh, several thousand dollars to get in, in shop labor and in uh, parts to get that machine fixed. Um, because I'm able to do it myself, 
Um, it'll likely cost me about $100 to have a hose made at a hose shop, plus my time. Now, I understand that my skill set is fairly broad and fairly advanced. But let's take the, an example of something that the average person, I feel, could undertake by themselves. Changing the oil on your car. Um, changing the oil on your car when you break it down you might only save 20 or 30 bucks every time you do it but how many times do you need to change the oil on your car over the lifespan of the vehicle then consider the fact that it's not just the money that you're saving on the oil change because 20 bucks you know fair enough whatever you may not want to spend that money but think about the time that you're spending driving to the shop to get it fixed think about the the fact that you're paying for that oil change with with after tax dollars think about that so for every dollar that you spend at the um, mechanic shop you've had to earn you know a dollar fifty maybe a dollar thirty um, because you're paying for that service with after tax dollars so learning how to do these things yourself ultimately will save you money. Um, yes, you'll have to invest in tools. You'll have to um, learn how to do it. Um, but in the long run, it'll be a, a money-saving proposition for you. The more skills that you can build up that save you money ultimately turns into large sums of money that you're saving over and over and over again. So number four, saves you money. Okay, last but not least, number five, being handy um, and learning new skills is sort of like a series of building blocks. These things that you're learning on a day-to-day -day or week-to-week -week basis build on each other. So coming back to the example of the oil change in your car, that may seem really intimidating to you right now, but once you've done it a few times, you may feel that the confidence that you've gained changing the oil on your car may allow you to change a headlight and then it may allow you to change an alternator. Before you know it, you might be tearing out the engine of your car to replace that. You'll, uh, you'll find that, you know, with the example of a, um, a house build, when you first start building a house you may only have the skills to frame or to pour concrete or you may only have the skills to paint a wall but as you do those skills and improve upon them they will translate to other skill sets what I'm sort of talking about is aptitude and how one set of skills complements another set of skills. So spinning a ratchet or working with a wrench in a tight place not, is not only teaching you how to do those skills, but it's also priming your subconscious for similar movements and similar skills that translate to other fields like framing or painting. Um, or drawing. And I think that the same thing is happening with our brains. As we accomplish certain 
skills in one field, our brain is taking that information and translating it and opening up doors in other areas of our brain for other skills to develop. So number five is uh, building blocks and, um, and how skills can build on each other. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I appreciate you guys coming along on my walk with me and uh, listening to me rant about skills and all that kind of stuff. And um, if you like the video, please subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, give it a thumbs up, and uh, we'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks.